Hi, my name is Vineeth. And I'm Akshay. And today we're going to be talking about closures. So what are closures? Closures are self-contained blocks of functionality that can be passed around and used in your code. They're similar to Lambda expressions, such as in Python. Simply put, they're just like functions, but you don't need to name them, and you can pass them around as arguments to other functions. So this is an example of what a closure would look like. As you can see, it looks very similar to a function definition, but it doesn't have a name. So what are they useful? They're useful whenever you want to pass in a block of code that would get executed as part of another function's execution. So some examples would be sorting, animations. They're very useful for async calls to make sure your UI loads properly. They're also useful for API designs. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and try them out. So I have a playground file that I've written here in advance. Uh, so we're going to look at two really basic use cases. So the first one, um, example one, um, we have a user class. Um, and we initialize a user um, by passing in a name and an age. So over here we have a user's array. And we've added two users to this array, uh, one with name Akshay, age 21, and one with name Vineeth, age 21. So let's say we want to figure out if the user's array contains a user with name Vineeth. So I've written out the code right here, but let's see what happens as I try and type it in. So when I do users.contains, you'll notice that this function takes in an argument that's a closure. Um, it doesn't just take in you know, a string. Um, reason being, it doesn't know how to uh, comp it doesn't know how to figure out if the user's array contains um, a user with name Vineeth um, just by passing in the, the string Vineeth. So here's what we do. We actually pass in a closure where the argument is the user and the retur return type is a bool. And then we just return whether the user's name is equal to Vineeth. So this closure that we pass in, this closure essentially determines um, you know, if that's the element that we're looking for uh, when we do users.contains. And this is called um, by the underlying API code um, that's written for uh, .contains in Swift. So now let's take a look at a second example. Um, so let's say we're trying to make an animation uh, and we have a view here that has width 300 and height 300. Uh, let's say you want to shrink this view to have width 200 and height 200. Uh, we can use the uiView.animate function uh, where we pass in an animation uh, duration and then we pass in a closure right here as the second argument to the function. And this is essentially the list of actions um, that we want to happen as part of the animation. So this could be one or multiple lines um, and it's essentially just a chunk of code that we want um, you know, uh, the underlying API to take and use as the animations that are performed on this view. So hopefully that gave you sort of like a very basic understanding of closures. These were just two very simple use cases with um, you know, the iOS SDK. Um, but I encourage you to look into more use cases and definitely go ahead and read uh, the Swift language guide online. Uh, it's great and it provides uh, some good pros um, that explains this further. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.